This is the lecture to accompany Chapter 3 in your textbook. I highly recommend you read Chapter 3 because there are a lot of examples, concepts, and ideas that I simply don't have time to address in this lecture. You can stop, pause, replay this as many times as you wish. All right, let's talk about listening. Hearing and listening are two very different things. Hearing is the physiological process that involves the vibration of sound waves on the eardrums and the firing of electrochemical impulses from the inner ear to the brain. So this is the physiological thing that takes place in order for you to listen. Listening, on the other hand, is an entirely mental process, and that involves paying close attention to and making sense of what is heard. So, yes, you've been hearing all your life, but listening is a learned skill. Hearing, unless you have some kind of hearing dysfunction, is completely natural. You don't have to do anything, and you can still hear. But listening is something that you really have to work on. So that is why we talk about it in our class, because you might think you're just in this class to learn to speak in front of a group. but that's not the only reason you're here. You're here to also learn to listen to the ideas of other people. And I have to tell you that most of us, me included, um, are poor listeners. There are always ways in which we can improve our listening skills. But in our communication-oriented age, listening is critical to our success. It's a very important job skill. And effective listening is useful not just in your job, not just in here at college, but also in your social and personal life. It's very important that you be a good listener. Now, listening skills are closely related to critical thinking. There are four different types of listening. And the first one is something that we all do and we all like to do, and that's appreciative listening. That's listening for pleasure or enjoyment. And if you are listening to your favorite band or your favorite comedian, that's an example of listening appreciatively. Then we have empathic listening, and that's listening to provide emotional support for whoever is speaking. If you, for example, are listening to your friend and she's complaining about her boyfriend or her job or some other aspect of her life and you are listening to try to understand and, and commiserate with her and relate to her, then that's empathic listening. So appreciative listening and empathic listening are things that we do all the time. We also do the next two, but these next two are very closely tied to critical thinking. So the they are the kinds that we believe are the most important for public speaking. The first one, comprehensive listening. Now that focuses on understanding the speaker's message. It's hopefully the way you're listening to this lecture right now. You are trying to listen in order to understand it. Critical listening involves evaluating a message either to accept it or to reject it. Now this is really important not only in this class because you'll be listening to other persuasive speeches when we get there, but uh, also in, in life. Think about it. People are always trying to persuade you to do things and uh, if you have good critical listening skills, you'll be able to tell whether or not they're trying to manipulate you or coerce you, or if they truly have your best interests at heart, if their arguments make sense. That's good critical listening. So these things are really, really important. So unfortunately, we, as I said before, are not particularly good listeners. And there are a couple of reasons for that. And the first one, of course, is because we are too busy thinking about other things. And uh, we are not concentrating on what the person who is speaking to us is actually saying. I don't know if you've ever heard the term pseudo-listening, but you've probably done it, and you've probably had it done to you. Pseudo-listening is where you act like you're paying attention, but your brain is thinking about something else. You may even be nodding and giving feedback to the person, but if they asked you what they just said, you wouldn't be able to tell them. Now, everybody can relate to that. Um, think about how you feel when you realize that somebody 
somebody else is doing that to you. It's not a very good feeling, is it? But a lot of us just simply don't concentrate on what someone is saying to us because we've got other things on our minds. There's something called spare brain time. Basically, our brains can process, oh, up to 700 words a minute. However, most people speak at between 125 and 150 words per minute. And if we had to listen to someone speaking 700 words per minute for any length of time, our brains would get awfully tired. But for short periods of time, we can. So because people are speaking much slower than our brains are able to process, that means we have a lot of milliseconds in there for our brains to get distracted by our own thoughts. I mean, imagine if you come to class and you've just had a a fight with your significant other and that's all you can think about and you come to class and you're trying to listen to other people speak, it's very difficult to do because your brain is thinking about this interaction that you had with your significant other and uh, that's all you can think about. So we have a lot of spare brain time that makes it very very difficult for us to concentrate. So we go the other way and we think well I'll just focus on this person so hard that uh, I will remember everything they say. Well that's just as bad. You really can't remember anything if you're trying to remember everything. And uh, most of us don't have eidetic memory where we remember everything that's ever been said to us. In fact, it's very likely that nobody in uh, our class has that ability. So trying too hard to remember everything can be just as bad as not concentrating on what's being said. Something else that we have a tendency to do is jump to conclusions. We start out with the intention of listening to somebody, but at some point we either decide that this person doesn't have anything we want to hear, or we already know it, or something happens. And we just stop listening because we have decided that we already know where this is going, or we don't like where it's going. And so we have a tendency to turn our brain off at that point and not listen. And one of the final ways in which uh, we are poor listeners is because we have a tendency to focus on everything but the actual message itself. In other words, we're focusing on how the person is delivering the message. It's either really bad, they seem nervous, they're reading off a paper instead of delivering it, looking you in the eye. Those kinds of things can distract us from the message. Maybe they look like they didn't even brush their hair this morning. They don't appear very appealing. And that can get you thinking about other things rather than their message. On the other hand, they might be delivering the speech very well and look very well and be very charismatic to the point that you're really not listening to what they're saying. You're just all swept up in their personality. So the same thing is true because you're still focusing on things besides the message. So those are all some of the reasons why we tend to be poor listeners. Well, what can we do about it? Well, there are several things that we can do about it. One of the first things that we can do is make the commitment to be a serious listener. Don't just assume that you're just going to sit there and let ideas flow over you. You really have to be what's called an active listener. You really have to pay attention. Now, this doesn't mean you have to remember everything this person says, as I said before, but you really need to become involved in what that person is saying to you. Try your best to resist distractions. I know it's difficult, but if you find yourself getting sidetracked and your brain going off topic, recognize that. That's the first step is realizing that you're no longer paying attention and focus back on the listener try to suspend your judgment. It's something that's really important for you to truly listen to other viewpoints besides your own. You don't have to go along with what they say, but you do need to listen to their reasoning. And try to focus your listening on their main points, uh, the supporting material or evidence that they have to support and illustrate those main points. Just because we have the tendency not to be very good listeners doesn't mean we can't make an effort to become better listeners. This concludes the lecture for Chapter 3.